So hello everyone. Uh, I'm going to speak to, uh, for the next hour about AI, AI capabilities in Power BI. Um, so let's start with a quick search in uh, what, will you, what you will find if you start searching for AI. Uh, first, when I prepared this presentation, I just did a, a, a Google uh, on artificial intelligence, and it turns out that you have 190 million hits in uh, less, than, uh, less than a minute. Uh, but you still have no clue what it is because the most advanced things pops up. And even if you use Bing, you will have something similar to that. Um, and you have still no clue where you're looking at. So before we go into AI in this presentation, I'll tell you a little bit more what AI actually is um, and how you can implement AI in your uh, Power BI solutions. I will shortly introduce myself a little bit further. Uh, my name is Mark. I'm working as a data and AI consultant for McCall in the Netherlands. Uh, as of last year, we also have a German location in uh, Cologne. Uh, I'm also a data platform MVP. Um, and besides that, I'm a huge fan of beer. Uh, so probably if I'm not speaking or talking about Power BI, I'm drinking beer. Uh, and most likely that's the only word I understand in German. That's something beer related. So uh, as you can see, I uh, turned the Power BI logo into Power Beer. Uh, you may have seen it somewhere online already. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or on my own website where I regularly post uh, blogs about Power BI. Uh, feel free to uh, add me on LinkedIn or Twitter or whatever you want. So enough about me. Let's uh, dive a bit deeper into the AI and Power BI session. Um, what we're going to cover today is an introduction to AI first, um, then a little bit about reporting and dashboarding nowadays and how that fits into the AI practice. Um, then I'm going to show you a lot of uh, AI and Power BI uh, uh, features that are already there today and are already there for a long time. And I always like to take a risk, so I have a whole bunch of demos. Uh, and let's hope the demo gods are with me and they're all still working. So artificial intelligence, uh, AI, uh, what, is, what is it actually? Uh, as I said, I first started Googling what is artificial intelligence, and it turns out that I uh, came up with something like this, uh, something uh, like a lot of buzzwords, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, neural networks, deep learning, uh, a lot of buzzwords, but you still have no clue what it is. And for me as a data analytics consultant, not a really technical person, I was like, okay, the deep learning, that sounds really, really interesting, but probably I'm not gonna, I'm gonna uh, handle that. So let's first start with artificial intelligence. And if we look at artificial intelligence and the definitions, any technique that enable machines to solve a task in a way humans like uh, humans do. So in other words, we're just automating things. But if it is that simple, why are in, aren't we doing that with Power BI already? So if we have a closer look at it, Actually, what we're going to do is four steps. It's all based on four steps. We're going to sense the data. We're going to reason it. So it's more like an uh, if this, then that. Uh, then engage. We learn from it and we sense it again. And this circle keeps on repeating every time. Um, so artificial intelligence does nothing more than we tell it to do. If we tell it to go left, it will go left. If we tell it to go right, it will go right. And it sounds... Very simple, uh, but let's see how we can bring that to practice. If we look at the ability to sense, reason, engage, and learn, uh, there are a lot of things what, what we're already having in our day-to-day -day life, uh, which are using AI. For example, computer vision, uh, where you can recognize traffic lights, cars, trucks, whatever, on a picture or even on, on uh, movies. Uh, but also think about voice recognition, what we can do with Cortana or Siri or whatever uh, Google Assistant or whatever phone you use. Uh, but also think about robotics uh, and a manufacturer that's building cars, for example. Most of it is, uh, today is based on robotics, but there's many more. So in other words, AI is not really innovation. Uh, it is there already for a long time and AI doesn't understand the real world. Uh, AI is in, in some sense just stupid. It, only does what we tell it to do. Um, it can learn from things, it can optimize things, uh, it can detect a pattern, inform you about this a specific pattern or inspire. Uh, but as you can see in the picture on the, on the screen right now, uh, if we don't tell any AI what water is, it will not understand what water is. So if AI lives in water, yet it doesn't know what water is. We always have to tell it and do the sensing ourselves and learn uh, AI to 
tell us the next time what it is and how it works. So let's have a closer look to what Microsoft is doing with AI. Back in 2016, uh, Microsoft was already investing a lot of money in the AI technology, uh, in object recognition, for example. Um, but also in 2017, doing a lot with speech recognition and uh, stuff like that. And it took a, a lot of steps in speech, and but also in language. And think about machine reading and human parody. If we're looking at the real cases, what they did, uh, Microsoft made it possible to build a pearl, uh, to create the first world's uh, award-winning whiskey, all based on AI. So what they did was um, uh, analyzing all the thing, all the data that's available about previously uh, previous award-winning whiskeys, put all the data together and let the AI algorithm learn, learn from that, and define the new receipt for the for the next award-winning whiskey. And so they did with based on sales data, customer preferences, um, with over more uh, over 70 million recipes from previously award-winning uh, uh, whiskeys, ingredients, uh, and they all put that in the Azure Cloud Platform, run some cognitive services on top of that, and based on that, uh, they made it possible to to create a recipe for the first world-winning AI whiskey. So that's just an example of what you can do with AI. If we kind of translate it to reporting and dashboarding, what we are doing nowadays with Power BI, and that's why we're all here, uh, the Power BI days. So if we combine those things together, let's have a closer look at reporting and dashboarding. Everyone today is engaging with software or Power BI. Power BI is becoming more popular and we're, gonna, we're doing more and more with Power BI. At the same time, Power BI is enhancing on more and more AI capabilities, what I will show you in a second. Um, if we look at the types of reporting we're doing today, it's for describing uh, why something happened, declare uh, or describing that something happened, declaring why something happened, or more exploring data and exploring data in the sense of uh, we don't know anything, we just drop in the data and see what's going to happen uh, and where Parvia comes up with. And especially in the last part and exploring part, AI can have a real advantage. Reporting in the past was mainly static, paginated, and textual, but today we are doing it more in a clear navigation, consistency across report pages, interactive from a high level, make it possible to drill into a deeper level. And that last one from high level to a detailed level is also one where a uh, recently released AI visual in Power BI has a real advantage. I'll show you that later on as well. So this is all BI, a business intelligence, but why not take it to the next step and transform it into something more and advance and use some AI, at first artificial intelligence in our, our reporting and dashboarding. So let's have a look at what AI uh, is operating today in, inside Power BI for you. If we're looking at this, it's already there for a long time actually, because AI is not only just the black box where we drop in some data and we, we see what's, what the output is, Back in 2015, when Power BI started, actually, uh, there were already first integrations to uh, do more advanced capabilities inside Power BI. It all started with the integration of R as a Power BI visual. It was possible to build your own uh, visualizations and even do some minor transformations uh, inside a visual with R. But of course, you needed to learn R, uh, you need to, needed to be aware of what you're doing. In 2016, they even they also integrated R in Power Query to do your data set transformations based on R. Then the next step was also uh, integrated with Python uh, in both the Visual and Power Query. But actually, in 2019, there was a big change. Then they made a lot of new AI capabilities available, which is AI uh, insights in data flows. Uh, in the meantime, it's also available in Power BI Desktop. The key influencer visual integration with Azure uh, Auto Machine Learning Studio uh, and running separately created machine learning studio scripts from Power BI. A few of them, I will demo them in, in a later moment as well. Some of these capabilities are actually part of Power BI Premium. I won't go too much into this, uh, but Power BI Premium is a specified offering for Microsoft uh, where you're running on dedicated capacity. Um, if you're having a Power BI Pro license, you're most, 
uh, most likely running on shared capacity. In other words, you're sharing the server capacity in the Microsoft data center um, with others. And uh, if you're running on Parvia Premium, you have dedicated capacity, so you have reserved server capacity, including some more enhanced capabilities because uh, uh, for more flexibility and more enhanced like uh, data flow linked entities and a lot of other cool stuff. Um, so a few of them, a few of the demos I'm going to show you are also related to Parvia Premium. For everyone, I will tell you if it is Parvia Premium or not. To show you a little bit more about what we can do with uh, AI and Power BI. Uh, actually, it's available for everyone. For every type of user within Power BI, uh, you should be able to use uh, the AI capabilities from an end user up to a data scientist perspective. If we look at the end user perspective, most likely you will use something like natural language theory, automated insights, uh, but also the quick insights uh, and maybe an AI visualization. More for the analyst, uh, you'll probably use something like key phrase extraction, image detection, sentiment analysis, uh, all based on the premium uh, related uh, uh, capabilities you have within data flows or within uh, Power BI desktop. And these are more the AI enrichments coming from the premium capacity. A BI professional might be using some uh, pre-created machine learning models uh, prediction to do some prediction and classification. And if you're more looking at data scientists, you will most likely create your own machine learning models, use some uh, AutoML, R, or Python. Uh, all of that is possible within Power BI. But why are we using this? Especially if you're an end user, uh, you might want to help the business better understand their data. And if you want to better understand their data, features like Q&A, quick insights, key drivers, and clustering can be very useful. Um, looking at the, uh, uh, the Q&A functionality, uh, there was a lot of rumor about it in the past because it was not that uh, good to work with. It didn't really understand your questions, but I will show you a few tricks in a second, how you can learn your uh, Q&A functionality to work better for your end users. Next to that, to help your analysts prepare their data, some forecasting, cognitive services, um, like the key phrase extraction and language detection and stuff like that can help you, uh, but also automated ML uh, and R integration, maybe a little bit, um, and make it easy for a data scientist and analyst to collaborate. You most likely will be still using R, uh, Python, and uh, the more uh, Azure machine learning integrations. As said, I like to take a risk. Um, so let's dive into, uh, jump into the demos. Um, we have more than enough time to, to uh, kill most of them. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to first show you something about quick insights, something that's not really uh, really interesting, to be honest. Uh, but let's build it up from something really simple we can all do for a long time already within Power BI to the more advanced stuff like AI insights. So let's start with quick insights. Then I will do a little bit of natural language query, Q&A. Uh, explain inquiries and explain degrees, uh, analyze distribution, key influencer and decomposition the two AI visuals, uh, and then the AI insights. So first, the quick insights. Uh, I'm going to jump to uh, Power BI Desktop right now. Um, and within Power BI Desktop, uh, wait. I have a report here, and within this report, it's something based on, it's a Microsoft sample, uh, the Hawaii tourism analysis, uh, where they report on the number of visitors um, that have visited a certain place in Hawaii. Um, quick insights can help you in things like uh, analyzing in what has happened with your data, or it giving you some more inspiration on uh, what your data might tell you. This in particular, uh, Quick Insights, works from Power BI Service perspective. So if you publish a report from Power BI Desktop and you publish it, in this case, I'm just going to publish it to my workspace, uh, there might be sh something showing up like your publishing was successful and now you can view it from, uh, uh, from Power BI Service. Uh, and if you want to, you can get the Quick Insights. So let's dive quickly into the Quick Insights if you want to uh, use them right now. If you go to the Power BI Service, um, and for now, I'm going into my, my workspace section. And 
still try to get used to this new look and feel. And here we have it. And let's see where this functionality is going. Here we have a button to generate quick insights and this, will, this wheel will start spinning for a moment. And now it's analyzing your data set to find patterns. To be honest, I already said uh, it's not that interesting where Power BI comes up with. Um, so let me elaborate a little bit more on that. If Power BI starts searching for insights, sometimes things will show up like uh, there's a distribution between uh, uh, the number of months and the dates. Just uh, yes, that sounds very legit. And this is an example like that. The index is trending upwards where name is something Maui, I don't know how you pronounce it, but especially working with an index column doesn't tell you anything. So if Parvia comes up with an insights related to an index, uh, it's kind of useless. Still, this feature can be interesting if you want to search for insights, but you really have to be on, on top of your data set. Uh, for example, this can be a reasonable uh, addition to your report that uh, some specific island has uh, noticeably more visits than all the others. Uh, if you want to do something with these insights, you can pin it directly to your dashboard uh, by just clicking the pin button. Uh, or if you want, you can still change it a little bit here uh, by opening it in focus mode, set some filters if you want, and then pin it to your dashboard. Um, so Parway comes up with a whole lot of different uh, uh, different insights as that really look into it before you start using them because not all of them are useful. This is what the Quick Insights feature offers today um, from the Power BI service. Uh, yeah, my advice should be use it for, uh, for inspiration, but not really to, to base your report on the insights that Power BI comes up with. So if you look at the next one, natural language query. Natural language query is something that wa it was there in Power BI already for a very long time. I'm gonna use the same data set for this, so the same report. And I'm going to show you some new capabilities that we have today. Um, but at first, let's show you something that was in the old experience. The old experience was a Q&A that you needed to enable by clicking a button, something like this. And if you clicked it, a new window showed up that looked like this, where you could start asking questions to your data. For example, show me the visits uh, per land. But as you can see now, it doesn't show anything because it doesn't know what the word land is. It's red underlined. Um, but if I type in something like visits per island, then it works. So I really needed to be on point of my data set to start using this functionality. But how can we make sure that my end users will start using this functionality if they are not aware of the column names and everything in my data set, because what Barbie is actually doing is mapping the words I'm typing to the names of columns and tables in my data set. So as, as I showed you, this didn't work, visit per land, but visit per island did work. Um, what's already there for a long time at Power BI is uh, adding synonyms to your data set. So let's dive into the model view. And as a report author, it's something you can do to make your uh, uh, reports a little bit more user-friendly for Q&A purposes. For example, here I have the column name, island name, as you can see on the right side, I selected them here. And here we have the synonyms field. And it's something only that only exists in your uh, Power BI desktop environment and only uh, in the model view. What I can do with synonyms is let the Q&A functionality react to different uh, names that my end user might be typing. So let's say I also want to uh, want it to react to a land, and I'll leave it like that for now. So let's go back and try if the Q&A functionality is working now. So if I type the same, visit per land, land. Now it's working because we're taking advantage of the synonym functionality but still the Q&A functionality is kind of hidden within the report because you need to see it to click this button. Maybe people won't use this button, uh, you don't know. But why not take it to the next level? Um, 
I think it was November 2019 or maybe a little bit earlier already, the Power BI team introduced a new visual in Power BI, which is the Q&A visual. And a Q&A visual can be uh, uh, activated by just clicking it here, uh, if you enabled it in your settings. Uh, and another option is just double click on your canvas and then the Q&A functionality will pop up. As you can see, you already get some possibly interesting uh, uh, items, possibly interesting uh, suggestions for your based on your data set. But what you can do, you make you can make this visual part of your default report and just leave it here so it's directly visible for your end user to start interacting with your data. But as a report author, it's even more advanced because what I can do here, it more or less works the same, is that it's per length, that's working. But maybe, my, I don't know what my uh, end users are thinking or if they know the, the size of my data set. So maybe they even type something like visit per province that's working, visits per um, country that's not working. So let's take it to the next level and use the, the settings of the Q&A visual here to teach Q&A. So when we're doing that, a new window will pop up and we can uh, we first get some explanations how, about how this stuff works. We can review questions and then probably I start scratching probably because I'm not plugged in with the right credentials. It's always fun. Um, and let me close this Power BI run in a second because this will keep on crashing. And uh, let me see where it is. Let's hope this is the right one. Um, so this new Q&A functionality will help you also into review questions where you can actually see from an end user perspective, quickly going to drop to another environment so, uh, uh, so I can continue on with the demo. Um, let's do it here. I'm going here. Go into edit mode for a second. Um, so what you can do is just type your questions. It's it's a native visual that can be integrated in your report. Uh, and in the same time, um, you can start using this for uh, other purposes like uh, 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 like training your model. Uh, as a report author, you can see which questions were asked to your data set. I'm not going to try this one again because probably it will break again. Um, and next to that, you can also teach your Q&A based on the questions that were asked in the past. So while this is opening again, uh, I can try to do it with another one, or let's save this demo for last. So it doesn't matter if it's crashing again. Um, I want to show you one more thing about this new Q&A functionality. Well, it's loading. So as said, if we double click, we get a Q&A, we can click the toggle uh, to get the uh, the uh, uh, Q&A setup. I'm gonna skip the review questions for now. So let's go to the teach Q&A and let's type in the same question that didn't work out uh, a few minutes ago. So uh, we wanted to have the visits per country. And that one didn't work. So if I'm gonna submit this question right now, probably it tells me I don't know what country is. Where do we refer to? The word country doesn't exist in your data set uh, as in a column name or a table name. So it's just asking me, what is a country? And as a report author, I can define here in the interface, country refers to the island. And let's pick the island name. So that looks a little bit more user-friendly. It's starting to show me here a preview, like how the visual will look. If somebody is asking this question, I can save it. Uh, and later on, I can manage all the terms here uh, and I can just say, I want to delete this, I want to add in another one. But the good thing is, is that this also merged back into the synonyms. So now I uh, put in the word country as uh, the definition for the column island name. So let's have a quick look. 
add the data model here. Uh, and if we're going to have a look at the island name, we can see that country here is added as a synonym. So in the end, uh, as a report author, you can already enter a lot of synonyms here on up front and afterwards learn and maintain your model based on the uh, customer feedback and the questions asked by the customers. Um, so that about Q&A visual. Another one that can be interesting is the explain increase and degrees. It's already there for a very long time. Uh, still the same sample report, how I tourism analysis and dive into that again. So if we're looking at this report, um, we have a trend line here. And on the trend line, is some, there's a functionality hidden on the right click. And if we do the right click, we can say explain ingress or explain degrees. Dep depends on the point where I clicked on. Um, and so, some analysis will start running. And what Power BI is doing now is something similar like we had with the uh, quick insights. It starts running and starts looking into my data set if it finds any patterns related to the point I clicked in my data set. Um, again, if you start using this functionality, you really need to be aware of your data set. It is not always as useful. So let's try another one and let's see what's happening here. So if I'm doing something similar here, explain the increase, I get more, of, more or less the same result. But the good thing is recently they added a, a functionality where you can just give a thumbs up or a thumbs down and um, let, let uh, uh, the, the algorithm on the back learn from your feedback. Is this a good result or is it a bad result? Another thing you can do is click on this plus icon. And with clicking on this plus icon, it will add the same visual as is created here to my report canvas. So it is available here. And with it, I can just integrate this visual into my report uh, if I think it is very useful or not. Um, so I can easily extend my report based on functionality like this. So let's give it one more try and do an explain degrees in this case. Um, so in this case, this can be something reasonable. The spending per trip uh, from the visitor's arrival is less uh, or has a significant impact on the degreasing for island name. And in this case, your column names can be a bit confusing. So also something to look after. If you want your end users to enable to use this functionality, make sure that you have clear uh, column names. Um, as I said, I don't think this is a very often used feature. Uh, it is hidden behind the right click. Is this really AI? AI? I'm a bit in doubt it, because it's just searching for an unexpected pattern. But is that AI? I'm, I don't know. Analyze distribution. Another report that I'm going to use here is uh, based on customers. And in this report, uh, it's something related to dispense per customer or customer interest. Uh, so let's dive into that one. And another functionality was also available on right click is uh, also in the analyzing functionality, find where the distribution is different. And it starts running some kind of similar algorithm um, where it, it comes up with insights like for France, a country, 29.4% uh, of the records and Germany had 15.2% of the records where in the UK uh, has 51% of the records. And that's all related to the one bar I clicked in my bar chart. Um, so it actually shows me the split per country um, for the specific item I clicked. So it comes up with another dimensional uh, item, which is country in this case, uh, to show me the split in that. So this can be a really interesting one. And again, it works the same by giving a thumbs up, thumbs down, or add it to my report. Then let's get, go into the more advanced stuff. Let's go into the key influencer visual. I'm using a different report here. This is the guest reviews, and these are the guest reviews based on uh, uh, hotel bookings uh, in a specific, specific uh, area. I will show you in a second this as well, this report, uh, because this includes a lot of the AI functionalities combined together. But first, let's go into this guest analytics part. This is actually what the key influencer visual is. Uh, it looks 
like the, it is multiple visuals, but it's actually one. This whole thing is one item, it's one visual. Key influencer visual was also introduced last year, uh, and it's just available in Power BI Desktop. You can simply add it to your canvas. And how this works is pretty simple, because in this case, it was set to, I want to analyze something about my customers. I don't know what yet. And I want to look at some patterns related to the primary interest, the country, uh, if they purchased a spa visit or not, and what type of reservation it was. And what Power BI is actually doing on the back is similar to, um, let's do it on a different page so you can directly see what it's resulting in. What Power BI is doing is nothing more and nothing less than just building a table in the back. So if we have all these same columns, it's just building a table like this and then start searching for patterns because this includes all my different records that exist and all the different items that I had in this customer table data set. What Farby has shown me here and is actually an answer to the question, what influences my customers to be returning to my hotel in this case? And as it's showing here, it's most likely that they're returning if they are from the UK. Um, and Another one, it's most likely that they're returning uh, if they're from Japan and also if they're visited spa. So what this can tell you as a report uh, uh, viewer is that it's probably a good idea if you advise your customers at the hotel reception that they need to visit the spa because then it's pretty likely that they return to your, to your hotel. So let's turn it the other way around. When are they not returning? If they didn't visit the spa, so that's another reason to advise your customers to go to the uh, uh, to the spa. And an interesting one here: the primary interest is honeymoon. So the reason they visit your hotel is honeymoon, and then they are not returning to your hotel with the same reason that they are going on honeymoon. I hope for everybody that this is the case, because otherwise you will be divorced probably and married again. Um, so this can tell you a little bit more about splitting your data set. What is also doing key influencer visual is the uh, creating segments for you. So if we click on a segment, for example, we have a segment here which covers a 94.2% of our data set. And if we open it, uh, so 94.2% of our data set uh, uh, is their primary interest is honeymoon. They didn't visit the spa uh, and the reservation type is not single. Also very obvious that they are not single if they are on honeymoon, but yeah, you never know. Um, and in the, in the same way, they created multiple patterns where you can analyze and, and see the distribution in your data set create based on the segments. Here they implemented the same thing. You can give a thumbs up or thumbs down where the algorithm starts learning about your feedback. And this is a key influencer visual. Uh, it is also very responsive because it will just scale uh, the way you want it. Um, so you can implement it everywhere in your report if you want. Uh, and I think it's a really powerful visual for, especially if you're uh, uh, not very good in the, the statistics part, but still want to give a little ad more advanced uh, insights in your data sets. Um, There's another AI visual I want to show you before I dive into the AI insights, and that is the uh, uh, that is this one, uh, which is the uh, decomposition tree. This is one that is still in preview, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe they made it general available right now. Um, but the decomposition tree works more or less sim uh, similar. In this case, we want to analyze a measure, so the sales amount. Uh, and we explain it by sales size, class, color, country, manufacturer. So again, we're creating one massive table. The interesting thing here is if I just remove all of these columns, which are just all columns from my data set, I have sales amount, which is, which is in total, and let's remove this filter as well. So it's fully interactive, as you can see. I have total sales amount about almost four and a half million dollars. Uh, but what I can do here by clicking on the plus is give me the split on the highest value, no matter which co uh, column this is, is it manufacturer, color, class, country, or sales size, give me the highest split. So what influences my sales amount the most? And if I'm doing this, you can see that class is regular, influences my sales amount the most because that's almost 2.8 million. Uh, and again, I can distribute this to the, uh, again, the highest. 
uh, and I get back the sale size for this regular category and regular is medium is the highest influencer. So what I can also do is fully interactive, as I said, so you can just click through and drill through your data set in this case. Maybe you always want to analyze uh, uh, this by class as first uh, position, so you can lock it. And if you lock it here, the class will always be your first split in your report or in your uh, uh, decomposition tree. The same thing worked with lowest value, where you can just say, what is the lowest influencer here? Uh, where the line directly goes to Azure as product color. Um, or maybe you want to uh, pick a specific column. Um, so maybe I want to split the category, uh, the seal size medium by in specific manufacturers who deliver most of my medium sized products. Um, as you can see, it doesn't highlight any of the lines here because uh, it's up to you to decide if you want to see the highest or the lowest. Uh, this is what what is called the, uh, the decomposition tree. is another AI visual that is available in Power BI nowadays uh, that you can just integrate into your reports. So let's take the next step and go into the AI insight. AI insight is something that can be running from data flows or from Power BI Desktop. Power BI Desktop is part of your uh, uh, part of your uh, uh, Query editor, where you can find it, but what I will do is I will demo it from the data flows. Um, for those of you who doesn't know what a data flow is, a data flow is more or less an entity, a table which you can prepare in the Power BI service and then leverage from Power BI Desktop. Uh, but you can also pre-fill it for additional uh, tooling like Data Factory, Databricks, uh, and in fact, a data flow is nothing more, uh, the end result of a data flow is nothing more, nothing less. Uh, than a uh, CSV file stored on an Azure Data Lake storage. Um, what the AI, AI, AI Insights is actually doing uh, is running some uh, cognitive services on top of that. Uh, and what cognitive services are doing uh, are split in a few categories, which can be vision, speech, language, knowledge, or search. Uh, and what Power BI is offering today is vision, uh, speech, language, uh, and I think another one, but you will see them in a second. Um, another thing you can do by leveraging the AI functionality in data flows is um, integration with Azure Machine Learning, as you can see on this, uh, this slide here. Uh, before we go into that, I'm going to do, do a demo of the uh, uh, AI insights running from a data flow. Um, and what I've done with that is I've searched on Airbnb to make it a, a more real case. Uh, pick the first one I could find is the some Airbnb location in the center of Hamburg. Um, and what we're going to do here is analyze some some of the uh, reviews, and let's par let Power BI tell us if this review, this text, is positive or negative. So what we're going to do here is we go into a workspace, and this is a premium feature. Uh, I want to point it out. This is a Power BI premium feature. Even if you're doing it in Power BI Desktop, we're going to build a new data flow. So let's set up a data flow. And what this will show me is an interface similar to what we are used to have in uh, our query, uh, in the query editor. And I'm going to define a new entity. So we're going to create a new table. If we want to do it the advanced way, we will probably uh, uh, scrape the data from the website. But let's use a simple setup for now. I already scraped the data and prepared it for myself. Um, so it is available in my notepad on my other screen, which you can see. And we just put it in here. So here we have a table. I just picked the four, first five one to make it a little bit uh, simpler and to follow what's going on. So let's go to next. And what I'm first going to do is make my first row headers. So this is just native Power Query and everything. And the second thing we're going to do is leveraging the uh, AI functionality. As you can see on the top here, we have a button that is AI Insights. So as soon as we click that one, um, what we can do is take the AI, AI Insights. And while this is spinning, what it's going to show me is a few options. I need to select the column that I want to analyze. Uh, and we have the four cognitive services available. That can be tech images, which will tell you if you import an image, uh, what, is, what is on this image. 
For example, if you import a whole bunch of pictures, it can tell you that five of the pictures contain a cat or a dog. Uh, Extract key, key phrases that will tell you um, uh, where an, a big line of text is about, what is it, is it telling you. Uh, and next to that, we have the language detection, which will just return you in which language it is and a score sentiment. So how positive or negative is this piece of text? As you can see, let's start with the key phrase extraction. So here we need to select the column and we're gonna select the reviewer text. One thing you'll see here is that we only have two columns. So your column times are really important. And language ISO code is something we can get from the detect language. If we doesn't, uh, don't fill it, it will detect it automatically. So Parvia is smart enough to run first run the detect language then use that as an input for this one. So we're just gonna click apply here. And what's happening right now is that these five lines I just imported are running through the cognitive services. As you can see, this is a Power Query functionality, AI function that post uh, pro process. And it's returning me here the key phrase extraction about where this is all about. And uh, it does that by uh, giving me back the, uh, here in multiple lines, um, what the review text was that it's only half an hour from somewhere. Let's quickly change this here. As you can see here, it's comma separated. It's a little bit more clear. Um, so in this case, it was something about Hamburg uh, staying in Germany. This one was about a quiet, ro a quiet room, close to shops, uh, transit. Uh, so enough information for me to decide where this review is about. So in just a few words, let's do another thing. And I'm gonna remove this one for a second. Uh, we're gonna run a sentiment score and we're gonna do it in the same way. We run the AI insights and we click the other option. Let's score the sentiment for the same column. So for the review text. And again, we don't select the ISO code. We just click okay and we wait for a second. What you will see is that this is actually creating function, functions in Power Query. So we can reuse the same functions for multiple columns in other tables. So other uh, uh, other tables in your same data flow or whatever you want. And now this is showing me the ranking that is a, a number between zero and one, uh, how positive or negative this specific review was. So here we have a few which are 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and this is 0 0.03. So this one seems to be really negative. So let's look up this one quickly because I know where I get it from. Some guy called Roland, this is one I scraped. And what his review is actually telling, I would never use his Airbnb host. He made an appointment and never showed up. So his uh, story is pretty negative. And what Power BI is just telling me in a ranking, in a number, that this is negative. To be honest, yes, this can still be improved because it's uh, running your text against a machine, an, uh, an algorithm, but that simply works best in English. So if you have your local language in, in Dutch uh, uh, or in, in Germany, uh, German for you, uh, this can be challenging. And what you can do is first run it through some translator and then run it through this algorithm or any other option you, you might think of. This is just an example of how easy it is to, to create something like this. Afterwards, you can save and close it, but let's go back to a report where I integrated all this together. I did this before for another meetup, uh, which was in Manchester uh, in November last year, uh, where I reviewed uh, or uh, scraped data from three different Airbnb locations to see which one was best for me. Um, just a very simple report, which is telling me something about the location. Location is probably something that influences, uh, uh, has a in high influence on the positivity of the review. So I can simply click it here. Uh, I can see that it was a wonderful stay in very, very flat, blah, blah, blah. Something about the location seems to be positive. Uh, this was also very positive, a perfect location. Um, so you can integrate these things nicely together to see which words based on key influencer uh, or based on the key phrase extraction have a big influence, what I can define based on uh, uh, the sentiment score uh, to define which uh, room or which Airbnb location works best for me. 
So just a very simple uh, example where you can easily play around with the data. Um, and here I also integrated the, the language detection by just see, uh, easily uh, switching between the Dutch reviews and the English reviews. Um, so that is an example, which is the more advanced AI capabilities, which you can do in a few clicks within uh, Power BI, within data flows or within Power Query in the query editor. Um, so let's do a short recap of what I've told you. Uh, AI is actually more than BI. With the AI functionalities in Power BI today, you can enhance your reporting uh, and insights uh, by taking the next step, by simply leveraging default functionality within Power BI, but also think more about the advanced capabilities like the things I just showed you in the last demo uh, with leveraging cognitive services. But actually AI is not innovation. AI is not doing nothing more and nothing less uh, than what we could already do and is all based on what we told it to do. Um, from my perspective, it is very useful for inspiring, optimizing and detecting patterns within your data set and then taking the next step by enhancing re your report with more uh, relevant uh, uh, insights and features. Um, to be honest, AI sounds like a buzzword and very complex, but it's actually on your fingertips within Power BI. You can do it really easy. As I showed you, within a few clicks, you can build your first AI practices in Power BI. Um, and I think that you can take your insights to the next, lef the next step within Power BI uh, uh, by leveraging the AI insights, especially, but to be aware that you need Power BI Premium for that. Um, with that, I want to finish this presentation, give you the, uh, uh, the option to ask some questions if there are. Uh, I cannot see them, I think, but I'm sure Katrin or Jan can probably help me with that. Yes, I see them, but I have already answered them. It's uh, only the question, will the recording be shared? So. Yes, the recorded will be shared uh, afterwards. Okay. Uh, everyone get an email and yeah. Okay, if that's the only question. <laughs> At the moment, mm -hmm. maybe some someone uh, like to ask another question, but um, I see only this one. Okay. Yes. Okay. So thank you very much, Mark, um, uh, that you have uh, spent the time with us. And um, in German, um, vielen Dank, uh, dass ihr heute dabei wart. Und ich würde mich freuen, wenn wir uns im äh, Juni oder im September wiedersehen würden. Gerne, wie gesagt, auf powerbidays.com gehen und schauen, wo der nächste Termin ist. Ähm, ich denke, wir werden erstmal weiterhin online bleiben, so wie es aussieht. Und ähm, wenn wir dann wieder ähm, ja, uns... Ähm, im realen Leben wiedersehen, äh, freue ich mich auch. Äh, von daher, wie gesagt, es gibt noch eine Mail im Anschluss, ähm, beziehungsweise spätestens morgen. Und ja, vielen Dank ähm, und wir sehen uns. Thank you and goodbye.